I'm in Beaufort, South Carolina, talking to Dean Moss, who is the unpaid executive director of the Spanish Moss Trail. Dean, apparently, when a railroad closed, other doors opened. They did. Um, this was the old Port Royal Railroad, which had been around since 1870. Uh, it was the lifeline of Beaufort uh, for many years. There was a port at Port Royal. There was a port at Port Royal, and it, as things went on, the railroad served the port. So it went back and forth, two trains a week, something like that, carrying mostly gravel uh, oh. and things like that. Huh? But in 2003, the railroad closed. Mm -hmm. uh, the Beaufort Jasper Water and Sewer Authority purchased the right-of-way. And uh, you were working for them. I was time. working for them, and that was principally for pipeline, you know, for be able to bury pipelines, sure. water and sewer lines. Uh, and uh, they leased uh, the surface of the right-of-way to the county. There is a kind of national movement, perhaps even international, of rails to trails, is that correct? That's correct. Um, and, and, of course, there used to be these small railroads all over the country. Uh, and as things change, as they tend to do, those railroads closed. Uh, those rights of way, though, still were there. So in communities all over the United States, those right of ways are being repurposed uh, for trails. And how long will it be when it's finally finished? Uh, the current plan calls for it to be about 16 miles by Ooh. the time we're done. Uh -huh. It starts at the sands in Port Royal, right on the right on the water there, and runs all the way up the length of Port Royal Island, which is what we're on, to the county fishing pier uh, at at the, on the Whale Branch. So it, you can ride from one end of Port Royal Island to the other. And, and plans are in place, I believe, that's really going to be a major driver for tourism and just for the local people, that they can actually go from Port Royal into the downtown of Beaufort. Yes, we're working on connecting both of those communities into the trail. And you said already people are using that as a, an alternate to commuting in their car. Yeah, we have people that are using it to go to work every day. <laughs> so, but beside that, let's talk about the impact on tourism. Uh, it is a very significant, uh, increasingly significant uh, factor in people's decisions to come to Beaufort. We have a way of tracking uh, people who inquire about the trail, and we've had inquiries from all 50 states and five or six foreign countries where people will go and discover the trail, and they want to find out about it, and they go on the website to see what they can find out. And of course, Beaufort has beautiful weather most of the time, and a lot of people bike. And of course, if you're on a bike, you get that wonderful little breeze. Right. And I think that um, bicycle parking spots are opening all over the place. They are. And what we found when, we, when this trail opened was that old bicycles came out of garages <laughs> that people had, hadn't used in years because all of a sudden there was a safe place where they could ride. If you're not a hardcore bike rider, you really aren't interested in riding in, with the cars. As we were walking this morning, the bicyclists were very thoughtful in announcing that they were coming and where they were passing. Um, and it looked like, so with young mothers of children and different people, skateboarders and all, people have a very strong sense of responsibility and courtesy. Is that what y'all are finding? Yes, it is. Um, again, we have all kinds of people that use the trail. And, and at some times of the day, it's, it's very empty. But other times of the day, there's a lot of people on it. So uh, I think you've developed kind of a culture that, that has kind of emerged on this trail. And it's interesting to me that almost nobody that you pass on this trail won't say, hello. Mm -hmm. Y'all have different um, entrances to the trail. And in some places, I believe you've built trestles so people can go fishing. Right. You know, Beaufort is a, is a community of islands and water. And so there are three places on the trail where we've built trestles and bridges for people to get across. Uh, in a couple of places, we just repurposed the old railroad trestles that were there. And in other places, we built new ones. But on the one here we're close to, uh, we've specifically designed it to allow for fishing. And we've knocked out some sides so people can, can get at the fishing without being in the middle of the trail and obstructing bike riders and walkers as they use the trail. You also have historical markers, and of course Beaufort does have a long history. There's one in particular that you think is quite fascinating and perhaps tells a story that's not as well known as it should be. 
Yes, um, and specifically the one I'm thinking of is the, the history of downtown of the area where the trail goes through what was the industrial area of Beaufort. Uh, it was where the station was, it was where the light plant was, and a number of the industrial activities occurred there uh, starting uh, in about 1870 when the train originally stopped in Beaufort. Um, we have put historical markers out of about 17 of them right now, scattered up and down the trail, identifying places of interest for people, uh, and uh, there are more to come. And you've had a partner, a very important member of the community mm -hmm. who has worked with you and been a great supporter. Let's talk a little bit about the importance of that. Yeah, we, we, we were extremely lucky from the very beginning because uh, one of our local residents, a part-time resident who has a large estate here on Port Royal Island, uh, Jim Kennedy, who is the CEO of, of Cox Communications, but also of the James M. Cox Foundation, uh, is a great bike rider and a trail guy, and so he was absolutely instrumental in getting this project done. We couldn't have done it without him. Uh, he's a true gentleman and, a, and just a, an inspiration in terms of his devotion to, to this kind of thing. And his, he, he made significant financial donations and uh, let, let his staff and people that he's working with in Atlanta come down and guide us through all this process. So we're, we are in, eternally grateful to him. And you have, your friends group has been able to have benches and um, some facilities for people to use and do things that just give people a little more pleasurable experience. And the landscaping that y'all have been able to install is so lovely too. Yeah, some of it we put in at, as the trail was built. Uh, other parts of it have come in after the fact. Uh, the friends have done some of it. We've been very, very lucky. Our garden clubs here in Beaufort have contributed and done a bunch of things. And then we have individuals uh, who have just adopted uh, some of these places and go out there every day and tend to the flowers and the plants around, around the edges. Dean, I think that they were mighty lucky that you were deeply involved in the water and sewer business <laughs> and had the vision and had other people in the community who had the vision to see that this could happen. It's a real treasure for this community. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, it is one of, uh, it's kind of a labor of love for me, and, uh, but it is really a community effort. Uh, lots of people involved and lots of people have donated and given time and, and their energy to make this real. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.